Meteorologist Joe Bastardi uh, it says a weather alert. This is our uh, our preliminary winter outlook, okay? Uh, buckle up. You ready? Good. Um, here's the uh, temperature forecast, uh, November through March. Here is the uh, snow forecast. So you can see it's another bullish-looking winter. In fact, uh, more bullish than I had it last year at this time. It took me until um, October to really... Uh, come around to uh, what what was going on. I thought it'd be warmer in the east overall, but uh, we're going to we're going to show you the result of that was me doing some research for you. Okay, now this theory that I'm about to give you was first put into my head by my father, who is a meteorologist, based on his observations in the 30s, 40s, and 50s of the hurricane seasons and then the following winters. And so this has grown into um, this hypothesis I have that if you have a cold May and the Madden-Julian oscillation, all right, I'm not gonna, uh, not gonna put it on here, okay? Has a lot of amplitude, a cold May, if you then carry through to a big hurricane season, the start of the next winter will be very cold all right, centered in December, all right, so let's take a look how that works, all right, let's take a look at, uh, th these are 14 Mays that were cold across the United States uh, that had big hurricane seasons that followed. Um, uh, there were 20 major impacting hurricanes on the U.S. coast after the 14 Mays that looked like this, so that's about 1.4 major hurricanes a year. And what did the following December look like? Well, look at that. Nice and cold, right? What did the heart of the winter look like? December, January, and February. You see how that looks? Now, here is what is absolutely remarkable. What you want to do is you not only want to get analogs, but you want to get anti-logs. I got 10 warm Mays, all right, which is opposite of this year. During those 10 warm Mays, the following hurricane seasons, out of 10, only had two major impacting storms on the U.S. Do you realize how cr the crazy correlation and discovery there? I mean, I I'm very excited about it uh, as far as being a possible tool. But there's a physical reason for it, because if the MJO does something uh, centered in May, it'll do it twice during the hurricane season. The same thing it produces a cold May with the MJO. Uh, those phases produce the big hurricane season. Then they usually show up again in December, right? And it's cold December, all right? But look at this. This is, a this is absolutely mind-boggling if you're into the weather. There's the warm Mays. The following Decembers were warm and the winters were warm. So now you understand that uh, perhaps even next year we'll give this a shot. We can start getting winter prepared for you in the spring if we see what May is doing. That is the research we're doing here at Weatherbell. We're glad to have you as a client. And, you know, we want more clients, obviously. But you're not going to get this anywhere else. All right. Have you ever seen this before? Of course not. All right. So... And, and, and really, the way I am, we've got the tests coming up, right? Let's see how it works out. Now, why would that happen? Why would the big hurricane season produce a fast start to the winter? Well, it has to do with the sea surface temperatures. See those? Sea, look at the commonality of those years that I pointed out, okay? Weak La Nina, you see the warmth in the Pacific coming straight into the Central Pacific, right? Northwest Atlantic warmth. What does that Northwest Atlantic warmth do? It pumps the ridge in August, September, October over Northeast North America and Northwest Atlantic. That means more hurricanes try to come toward the U.S. Also means more heat is building up in the atmosphere in the preliminary months to winter. Okay, so let's look at what's going on on the uh, actu actual uh, fork, uh, the actual data here or forecast over the next three months. There's the Central Pacific warmth. Northwest Atlantic warmth, right? So what happens the following de December's at 500 millibars? There's blocking that goes on over Greenland. You see that blocking there? Where does that put the trough? 
The trough is over the east. What's the European going to? There's the blocking over the trough, the top of the trough over the eastern part of the United States. So how might this winter turn out? Well, we may stay warm into November. Sometime during November, there's going to be a flip. I'm not sure when yet. Uh, you know, some years you've seen it flip early and November turns out cold and then the winter starts disappearing uh, later in December and on into January. I think it's later rather than earlier. December, though, it could be a December to remember. January, it starts backing off. Now, this is what's wild. Absolutely wild. Look at Look at what happens. December cold. There's January warming up over there. It then turns cold where it was warm for February. But look what you see what happens right now watch what happens in March it goes back the other way so what and what you're start, starting to see is what we call destructive interference all right so there's Feb uh, uh, excuse me uh, Fe February looks like this look what happens in March it warms back up again right so let's go over this March gets warm February's cold in the very place January was warm, all right? And then December's cold over the east. So you could expect a zigzagging winter and uh, us having to, you know, keep up with these uh, things going on. Now, not every winter is zigzagging. We showed you those examples in May. Uh, you know, the warm Mays and uh, the following winters being warm, mainly over the, the United States. Now, some of you are gluttons for punishment. I know you are. You want the winter to continue, and recently winters have been continuing. The April-May uh, period, using these analogs, goes to this. All right, so it, it's sort of a crapshoot, which makes sense because you see, you know what destructive interference is? The very pattern that causes one thing then starts stimulating the type of situation that tries to destroy it. That's how nature works. Nature always goes back and forth, Okay. Uh, th there's no such thing as normal. There's average. You average out all the extremes, but it is normal to have some extremes one way and then the other way. Okay. Uh, look at that. This is pretty cool. I, I'm going to finish up with this. Here is the 500 millibar forecast from the analogs, the years I chose. Okay. Based on cold May, hurricane season, acting a certain way. This, uh, right. So that's what it looks like. Look what the European looks like. It looks like, now you've got to understand, this map is based on stuff researched back in May. Here we are with the European seasonal forecast, and it looks, it looks like what we were looking at back in May, except you pay a lot of money for it, and it gets issued in August. So <laughs> I'm a wise guy, okay? Uh, so that's it for now. I hope this... Uh, I hope it raises questions, but answers questions, because if there were no questions, then why are you a client, right? But uh, I, I we just, it's August, put this in the back of your head. You know, my dad, who again is a meteorologist, he says to me, he'll say to me, uh, I'll say, dad, I think this is going to happen. He goes, what makes you think you can see the weather five, six months away? All right. I don't know anything. I show you what I believe is going to happen. It only is knowledge if it actually does happen. And then people will argue over whether it did in this day and age. All right. That's another story for another time. I'm looking forward to it. I, I am so grateful that you're a client of mine. God bless you. And uh, above all, well, no, I don't know if I say that. God forgive me. Okay. God bless you. I, I think that's a good thing. But also enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got.